Are we ready? Yes, we're ready. We're ready? We are ready. All right. You are listening to the VegasTourist.com podcast episode number 245, Soundtracks and Other Vegas Tourist Tidbits. Ooh, la la. Hit it, Carl. We're here. Yay. I finally get you in front of a microphone. I'm not sick. I'm not tired. <sighs> I'm not busy. Yes. I'm not tearing the yard apart. That, of course, is my wife, Miss Debbie. Hello, folks. Yes, we're back. The Vegas Tourist.com podcast. It's been a couple of busy couple of weeks, couple of months, probably. I don't even remember when the last time I did a show here. We did a show here. Uh, 244. It's been over a month since we've done a oh show, my sweetheart. Gosh, shame on you. The fans have abandoned us. I Can you blame them? No. We've been really busy, and we both got really sick here this last couple of months. This flu that's going around, it really got everybody. We're having our pool redone. <laughs> We're having our yard redone. Yes. We've traveled. We've, we've been to Kanab. We've been to Zion. Mm, yeah. We even took the grandkids. Yeah, and survived. And they survived. They survived. <laughs> they weren't too happy about 19 degrees. <laughs> We're dressed. No, you're not. We really aren't. And they, when they went out and saw their breath in the air, they're like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, being dressed... <coughs> Wearing leggings isn't exactly no. cold weather. No, the, those tight, little tight jean legging things wasn't quite exactly what we had in mind. Yeah. Or, or the the tennis shoes that you, what are they called, the Vans? You the can, Vans tennis shoes with the socks, the ankle socks with, oh my gosh. You can tell they were born here. Yes, born and raised right here in Nevada. Got to wear long pants. It, it, it's that cold. No, you're going to need a little bit him, more than that. I told them jeans, two short sleeve shirts, two long sleeve shirts, and a jacket. Did they listen? No, they didn't listen. We were up in Kanab for what? Other, the balloon festival. Other than to torture the two eldest <coughs> yeah. grandkids. but Yeah, we were there to see the balloon festival, Fiesta there. That, that, was, that was so fun. That was, was so cool. It was so cold. But once it started to get started, it was a lot of fun. It I was really awesome. Enjoyed. That was my first balloon get-together, and I really enjoyed it. It was beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been a busy, it's been, a, you know, and then, of course, we saw a couple shows. And yeah, we've seen a couple shows. Um on the Vegas Strip, Fountain Blue is now going to be called The Drew. Oh, God. Another stupid name. When are they going to go back to naming things something normal? As soon as the idiots on Wall Street stop buying this shit and folks that actually have a have an interest in it buy it. But uh, speaking of which, Steve Wynn finally caves to the Me Too crowd and resigns as the CEO of The Wynn. So look for more Vegas to go to go to the dump because he was really the last the last one to stand up for Vegas. Yeah, I mean I mean when you look at the strip, he is the he's probably the last one to actually have worked in a casino. So it came from the bottom and worked right. his way up. Well, almost bottom, but still <laughs> you know, you know Everyone up in in the upper management of Caesars has never. I I don't think they even know where the entrance to Caesars <laughs> is. Okay, I know Jim Mirren, CEO of MGM, has no clue to where the entrance to the MGM is. Right. I don't even think he knows where the MGM is. Okay. You know, I, I'm sure he sees it when he flies in. Well, yeah, has to see it. But yeah. I've always said that that if if the if the MGM board of directors looked at Jim Mirren and said, in order for you to collect your multi-million dollar paycheck, you will have to spend one hour, one month, every month sitting in a casino that we own and talking to a customer. I will, I will bet you he almost a- anything that he would resign immediately. He wouldn't immediately. be able to pull that check, that's for sure. Nope, nope. He would, he'd be out that door before you ever finished that sentence. Yeah. 
Well, you'd have to get it validated by the customer. You know, yeah. after you spoke to the customer for the hour, here, can you validate the, yep. this, that you have done this? Jim Mirren, CEO of, of MGM, if he was ever forced to actually talk to a customer, you would have to look, look for the person in the hazmat suit because he hates the customers that much. <laughs> <laughs> he has no clue to who they are. He has no clue to what they want. how he gets his paycheck. No, or or how to how to take care of them. Now, now, now. I now I talk a lot about the tinfoil hat people with the uh, Mandalay Bay uh, shooter. So this is going to tie into that, um, but it's going to be in. Reverse, you're gonna to swear to God that I'm wearing a uh, tinfoil hat on this one, but he's not. I'm here to to verify. <laughs> Steve Wynn was brought down by a political movement. The Me Too people were played. They didn't know they were being played, but at, but but to the Me Too people, they didn't care. They got a target, and and that target was Steve Wynn. the The reason I say that is because Steve Wynn. With the wind, is building uh, Paradise Park mm -hmm. in the what what used to be the beautiful frickin' um, golf course, which is going to be a water park, a convention center, and a boutique hotel, where you where companies and events w would be able to actually just take it over. They would have a hotel and a convention center. Would never have to leave his grounds. Mm. And then in front, he had just purchased the land that used to be the new frontier in front of the Trump Tower. Ah, okay. Yeah. So he's going to build over there. And that would add probably another 2,000 rooms to his already 5,000 rooms, which would give him a little bit more juice, which he really doesn't need, to take on MGM and Caesar's Monopoly, which would then... And he's been making friends with Sheldon Adelson because Sheldon Adelson, when, when, when the whole stadium came out, God, I was not planning to go down this road. I know. I seem, I seem to have lost you. Yes. We started on bullet points of what we were going to talk about, and I lost you. Yes. You went, woof, squirrel. But Sheldon Adelson was Steve well, you Wynn's. know how you get when you get fired up yeah. or something. Yeah, thank you. You know, I mean, Steve Wynn and Sheldon Adelson. Sheldon owns the the uh, Venetian and and the Plaza. These guys have been going to court for everything. Okay, they went to court for the number of parking spaces each had in their garages. Okay, oh my all right. When so they were ultimate rivals. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, um, but when when Steve Wynn came out against Obama, but for Harry Reid, which went a, totally against Jim Mirren, MGM. Then came the stadium, and, and Jim Mirren said that that was a horrible idea, so everyone just, fought, just, just fell behind him and went, that's horrible. Then Steve Wynn pops up and goes, that's a really good idea. All of a sudden, Jim Mirren went, you know, we need a stadium. <sighs> okay, yeah. Then when Steve Wynn came out with this Paradise Park idea, Sheldon went, I like that idea. And I and I swear you could literally hear, you know, you know, the pin drop. We're what? twenty miles away from the strip. You could hear Jim Mirren's neck crank when he turned his head and went, "Huh?" <laughs> Sheldon Adelson and Steve Wynn are and agreeing he, on something. And you know, the thing is, is if those two would have got really got together and partnered up, they could take on. Uh, and really do some damage to the pain in the asses that were running Vegas. But see, here's see here's here's the wedge, or what I see a, as the final straw, that they needed to bring Steve Wynn down was Sheldon Adelson says I'm going to build a concert hall behind the Wynn garage, the Wynn the Wynn employee parking lot. He owns the land behind that. Okay. Okay. He was going to build a twenty thousand seat. Um, uh, uh, concert hall, okay, like Carnegie. Oh my goodness. Okay, which MGM went, yeah, whatever. Well, no, he teams up with Madison Square Garden to build the Sphere. This is a a globe that can expand electronically. 
and the concert so is the inside sound, of it. So the sound would always be perfect for sound, the size of the group. Sound, visual, oh my all gosh. of this. Well, Madison Square Garden and Ticketmaster, which is, which is Access, uh -huh. are, are the people who are managing T-Mobile Arena. Uh -huh. Okay? This thing is going to be so state of the freaking art. And they're going, ooh. Yeah. You know, you know, and let's do this thing. Well, yeah, that's going to team up with, with Steve Wynn, Paradise Park, Water Park, the whole works, the zip line, and all that. These two, plus all of the rooms that Steve, is, that the Wynn is going to build on the old uh, Frontier site, plus the fact that to do this, they're going to have to put a monorail stop right where. The Sands Convention Center, the Wynn and Wynn's Employee Garages, there's a curve right there. Ah. Well, Sheldon has been wanting that stop for so long, but the LVCVA, the slush fund for, for MGM, kept saying no, no, no. Well, they can't say no anymore. Right. So it's like, okay, this is now in the pipeline. This is not a dream. This is yeah, not... It's now in the works. Steve Wynn brought in all of his designers and and they're hard at work right now. This is not a pipe dream. This is going to happen. Wow. This was going to challenge. This was going to put a challenge to the gaming board, and the LVCVA to finally say, we need to now look at this, and do something to help the tourists, not help Jim Mirren. Right. And I think oh, that. Oh, you mean yeah. the people who come here to enjoy their time yeah. off? Yeah. Oh my gosh, what a concept. Yeah. So all this kind of worked out, and then, you know, and then this whole thing with, with uh, Steve Wynn, and, you know, and everyone was like, oh, my God. I'm like, really? You didn't see this coming. Give me your, your best, oh, I'm shocked look, okay? Casablanca, you know? I'm shutting <laughs> you down. There's gambling in there. Oh, here's your winnings. <coughs> yeah. Oh, did you want this before you left? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, uh, no, this was... This was treading on 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 the whole MGM Caesars monopoly thing, having Steve Wynn get really chummy with Sheldon Adelson, and then, oh yeah, Donald Trump and I are competitors, but we're friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was like just, yeah yeah they're actually really good friends, mm -hmm. but I always get this on my video on. YouTube, I got a, a comment up there now with this one. It's like, God, you hate hate Trump. I'm like, no. No, you love Trump. You're I'm as, on the other end. A, as competitors, Steve Wynn and Donald Trump lock horns. Yeah. Trump kicked Wynn out of Atlantic City. Steve Wynn kept Trump out of Vegas until 10 years ago. Okay. As rivals, they hate each other. But as personal people... As friends, because they're both well, billionaires. Yeah, they, and, but they're in competitors. So right. they're going to try to, it's just like two race car drivers. Exactly. They're going to fight to keep the other one out from, keep keep the other one from being in that front. Right. But so. but after the race, they're at the bar yeah. going. Then, then, and of course, I'm going to say racing because NASCAR was here this right. weekend. So. No. Our first, first three race weekend. You're looking at me like, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Normally we had Friday as poll day, mm -hmm. where they do the testing and the right. fans come out. Okay, and then um, Saturday was the Samstown 300, and then Sunday was the Cobalt 400. Well, now because we have this this race weekend, and then we have another one in uh, uh, September. That Friday was actually um, I uh, uh, the uh, truck race was on Friday. Oh. Saturday was the Samstown, or sorry, the Boyd Gaming 300. They changed it because it's... It's not just yeah, Samstown, right. it's Boyd Gaming. And then, and, then, uh, uh, and then instead of the Cobalt, it was the Pennzoil 400. So we actually had three full days of racing. And then in September, it's going to be three nights of racing. Nice. So, yeah. So we did have NASCAR here. We had nice. the Truck Holler Parade. That was cool. Didn't get down there. Thank you, Tom, for taking the photos because... Yeah, I was in bed sick. Yeah, well, that and you you really got to be a good photographer because you got to... Hey, what are you trying to say? Bec You've been there when I talked to Tom. <laughs> You've heard him call that 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 holler parade at night, you know. Oh, yeah. Shoot, <laughs> well, shooting at night 
to start with is hard. But trying to shoot semi shiny, trucks, shiny objects right in your off face, of night, yeah, yeah, that are all lit up with neon lights, lights bouncing off the truck, <laughs> yeah. and then yeah, yeah. I can see. So then your camera wants to do the flash, and, you, yeah, and it's, you it's can't just like use no, the flash. no, no flash, no. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so so we had NASCAR, we had um, USA Sevens, uh, the rugby, yeah. rugby thing. There's a third one here. Um, soccer. We, now that rugby is soccer. No, no, it's not soccer. Vegas has their own soccer team now, and yes. they play down and they play downtown. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, you know. So yeah, it's so got all that going. Um, up on the website, there's a post. Uh, I went out to the West Rim. They now have the zip line out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, uh, you and I went went to see uh, uh, Matt Goss. Oh, Matt Goss! <gasps> oh my God, uh, that was a good show. Yes. Oh my God, that was a good show. But we're not here to talk about that one. Oh, that's next time. Oh, but that was a good show. That's a good show. Oh my gosh! I walked out of there. I just loved that show. Of course, the the drinks that they served in the small atmosphere, that 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 showroom there at the Mirage mm-hmm. is amazing. Anybody, if I was to recommend somebody who wanted to be a singer and go perform somewhere, perform in that showroom, because that was awesome. Well. Anyway, well, I know we're supposed to talk about something else, but Matt Goss, you rock. Yes, and thank you for the for the plug because he. I know I saw that. I saw that that he liked your post on his he, him. He liked my post. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but so. yeah, we loved the show. That was a cool show. That was a fun show. Uh, uh, it you know I mean he's you got really got in. I really got into it. I really enjoyed that show. Old time Vegas, baby. Yeah, it really was. It just really took you back. It made me wish I was around. To see the Frank Sinatras and the Sammy Davis Juniors because that just, I never thought um, going to a show just to hear somebody sing would be all that. You know, I grew up in the the time where you went to go see a band play and there had to be an opening band and in the band and right. I mean, you're going to a concert, you know, the idea of just one person coming out and just singing and entertaining you um in a small area, I just yeah. I couldn't wrap my head around it until that night, and then I was like, "Wow, that was!" Yep. I was blown away. Which, but then, but then, Clint Holmes and yes. what was the other guy? Ed, Ed, I can't remember his last name. Oh, come on, baby, come on, come on, come oh, on, come on! Oh, dang it, I'm not good. Earl, Earl, Turner, Turner, right. See, I would have not remembered that yeah, at all. Yeah. But he was, can I say badass on the radio? <laughs> um, this is a podcast. We're not FCC. Go for oh, it. Oh, okay. He was, oh my gosh. His, um. Okay. Oh my God, I'm playing right. brain okay. dead stuff. Yeah. Okay. First of all. His impressions. Oh my God. And his jumping from the the ground, the floor, up back on the stage in one leap when he's like 70 years old was shocking okay this is at the westgate all right it's called soundtracks your songs our stories the shows all right earl turner clint holmes now we went on media night yes you didn't see what i'm about to tell you okay um clint holmes and uh earl Earl, uh, earl turner um, these are Vegas legends. I, you know, that's the only way that I can explain these two. But, but they've been on Broadway. They have, they have written for Broadway. Um, uh, they both won many awards for their music and all that. But they really, really cut their teeth in Vegas as lounge acts. Yeah. You know, back when we had lounge acts, yeah. and 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 I remember seeing um, Earl at Rio. Uh, when I at first moved here in 2001, um, there was a show with a ventriloquist with a dragon, Ron. I can never mem- remember his name. But I, but, but I went to see that show. And coming into the Rio, there's, there used to be a lounge there. You know, this is back when, when the casinos wanted you to come in and actually spend time there. Um, you know, so they had these free lounge acts, which was which what made oh, Vegas. I, yeah, I, Samstown is one of the only that still do it. Yeah. But I remember 
coming in, walking through, and there's this lounge that was just like freaking packed. Just couldn't, you know, I mean, you thought Elvis was performing right. because this <laughs> lounge was just packed and everyone was outside the lounge. It was packed. The pouring out people? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you know, here's here's this guy named Earl or Earl Turner just bringing the freaking house down, you know, and then like a couple weeks after that, I, I, I remember reading that, that they actually made it a ticketed show and kind of going back, back, back to to Matt Goss because that's basically what Matt Goss did when he first came here. Um, he was at the uh, Cleopatra Barge in uh, uh, Caesar's Palace. And I think his first couple of shows were, were free too. But but anyway, you know, Earl was like one of the last real lounge acts here. And, you know, and then, then boom, you know, they went anywhere. But that night, because of these two, you really do not realize this, but I'm going to give it away. Earl Turner is 64 years old. Clint Holmes is 71. It, See, hell, you told me this a few days after the show when Clint Holmes was talking in between the songs and he had mentioned that his last, before his current, he, he has a current number one single right now right. out. And be, the last one he'd had was 45 years ago or something. And I was thinking you were to thinking myself, diapers. how old could he have been? Seven? Yeah. You know, he he looks 45 years old. Yeah. He does not look that old. So a few days later, you told me how old he was, and I was like, no way. Mm -hmm. These guys were, first of all, the energy the two of them have together, yeah. the way they fed off of each other, and then the way they can move. Mm -hmm. They're both dancers. They're all over the floor. They're all over the the showroom. They're everywhere, and they're they're... I mean, they just got this. The energy radiates off of them. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. "There is no way, no way." <laughs> <laughs> we were what, ten rows back? Probably about ten rows. We didn't have bad seats. No, we did not have bad seats. But and, you, and we were right. We were like the second set of seats yeah. from the aisle, so we were right near the aisle where they walk right up while when they come out to the in the audience they come right out right and shaking hands and i mean they were right there by us what i loved is right in front of us was the one lady that uh that um told us way back when that you know we would never work in this business again but anyway but um uh you were off to find the restroom or uh something they were bringing this couple down to seat them and they were supposed to be in our row and the one woman looked at the usher and went, do you know who we are? Oh, that's my line. <laughs> yeah. And the usher, God bless his soul, because I'm sure he's done this a heard million it, times. And he's heard it. Just turned around and said, follow me. And he walked him out. I don't know where he went, but he, but he just, <laughs> oh just, my. just walked him up. But I just sat there and I've heard that so many times. Do you know who we are? We <laughs> get better seats than this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. When you're in a show like this, yeah. you're thankful you're, you're not upstairs. Yeah, you're lucky you're on the floor and yeah. you're not up in the balcony in the nosebleed section. You know, um, uh, uh, what's good is because these guys go over the, the various eras of music, you know, over they, the last... They really did. Yeah. I mean, and it, and it takes you it takes you to the... Oh, the James Brown. The James Brown was awesome. I I made this this in a... I didn't even like James Brown, but the James Brown was awesome. <laughs> that, 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 that was cool. That was he did the whole James Brown moves. I don't even like James Brown. That was not my music. Band? That was band. Oh my god, that was hilarious. It was oh, it was best thing, best 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 thing. No, he did that so well, and their band, their supporting band, yep, top notch. And I I grew up as a band member, top notch band, top notch. What what shocked me was when you led the house to a round of applause, you stood up and just, I have never seen you do that. You normally sit there going, what the hell are they standing up and applauding for? That wasn't that good. You were up and off your feet. Going, yeah! I'm like, holy cow, she likes these guys. Well, you know, I I grew up with music. I grew up learning. I I started out with a clarinet when I was in fourth grade. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm a music oriented person. I always have been, but it takes a lot for a song to really get to me or a type of music 
to really reach you, you know? So when you're seeing a show and it goes every song back to back right. to back to the, where it's you can't help but want to get on your feet. See, and, and, and you feel the energy. It's yeah. that energy, and they fed off each other. So it wasn't like oh, yeah. one was a good performer and the other one was just there to take time away to give the guy a break to they get a are, drink. They are two really good friends because, like I said, they cut their teeth in the Vegas lounges. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, uh, Clint Holmes talks about how, you know, he his his first gig here was a lounge act at uh, the Desert Inn. So he would, you know, so they would naturally tap him to to be the opening act for whoever's in the main lounge mm -hmm. or, you know, you know, in the main, you Children. know, so, yeah. yeah, you know, so, so he got to sit with and warm up with, you know, Some Johnny Cash, ones, and, yeah. you know, um, uh, Earl Turner talks about, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. was oh. basically his godfather, oh really. Oh my gosh, and he does such a good Sammy Davis Jr. Oh my Davis God, Jr. yeah. So, you know. As they tell their stories of coming up through through the ranks and through the ages, they hit upon these songs of all these people that influenced them, and you know, and knows that they influenced us. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you know, and then like like. But you know, even when they sing together, they both oh. have they're both amazing artists, yes. both of them. But when they got together, sing together, they fed off each other. Yeah. They're, they're energy with each other mm -hmm. were perfect they were perfect together this so is like you know you can't help but you just wanted to you you felt you yeah. were involved in something well you just weren't sitting there watching well something. it's like like now when when either of these two are in town they're usually like at the smith center which holds i think 600 or 800 people and you know it's always sold out in advance you know these guys could could fill that showroom which is 2,000 seats. Well, look at the energy they have now in their 60s and 70s. Can yes. you imagine what they were like in their 40s? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <sighs> you know, and then, like, you know, they also do that. I mean, there was that one time where, where they had that bar set up, and yeah. they sat down, and they talked about that room. Yeah. You know, and then they did Elvis Presley. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, and I, I mean, almost, it brought me to tears. I don't think I've ever heard someone do uh, Love Me Tender the way they did the it. way and they, they did. did it together and I've other than heard. elvis Pre that's an elvis presley song you do yeah. not touch an elvis presley touch. song nope. those two unless you can improve upon it yes and, and they did a really good i mean i i'm getting goosebumps thinking yep. about it but it it brings kind of a tear to your eye it was it was a really good impression of it and i always like to watch the audience and and you could see that because i know because i can always see your eyes on me yeah um, because there's, you know, especially when you're on media night, you know, these people are like taking really, yeah, you really can see the ones with okay. the notebooks. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was like, um, you know, and everyone's like, oh my God, they're going to do Love Me Tender. You don't do Love Ooh, that's a good copy. Of it. Wow. It, you know, you really know when they put their notebooks down in their lap. Yes. And they sit up. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yep. I don't even need to take notes on this one. I'm going to remember this. Now, for those of you that would like to see this, you know, this is this is for those of you that are that have not been to Vegas previous to probably 2010 when the lounge acts died because of the greed. But anyway, um, uh, uh, get off the soapbox. Man. Yes, get I know. I know. I know. God, I could get on a soapbox uh, on that one. That's a whole podcast. Yes, in it is. It is. Bring back our old Vegas. Yes. But these guys alone are worth the price of the ticket first of all oh yeah um the fact that together there's no ego there that was the cool thing i didn't you see didn't, an ego you didn't see no you you did not see an ego at all you've seen the two of them enjoying what they do and doing a fantastic job together they looked like they were having a good time yes and that's why an audience enjoys that show yep. is because they were having fun this is what you used to see Previous to probably 20, I'd go 28, uh, um, uh, right before the crash. This is, this is what Vegas Entertainment was. This is what built Vegas Entertainment, were guys like this. Mm -hmm. And Well, they need to bring more in like this because this is the stuff that yes. 
that I would go back and see again and again. I, in fact, I'd bring family that comes to town. That's the kind of show I want to take them to go see. To see these two together, I mean, first of all, alone you would love to see them. But yeah. but to see them together, and uh, this is not a set a set act. Um, uh, uh, they change songs as the show moves on from from night to night. You're not going to have the same the uh, wow. uh, you know so so they just kind of ad lib the yeah. show well, that's really cool well, well they've got 30 year well first of all they got 30 years together <sighs> okay well not you know crossing each other's paths right so they have a lot of material to go over plus they've got their own songs that they've written for broadway they've written for can you imagine f- being that band back there oh god what are they gonna do next oh shit it's gonna be that one let's <laughs> you think they're gonna do this nope they're gonna do that one yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is cool because you've got to be a talented musician oh, to definitely. keep up with them. Again, that's what Vegas used to be when they had the live acts, when they had the live bands. Yeah. You you know, you had that. Let's see what we can do today. Yeah. Okay. Um, I always go back to and see. That's what you want to pay for, though. That's what you want to pay for is yes. to go see something you can't see when you're at home. Yeah. Go see something like that. These these uber talented people. Doing well, it's music. just. It's just that a it's live, so so it's not set. And it's close. Yes. It's not like going to a concert arena, you know, with right. fifty thousand people going to see something where you can see the little specks down on the stage. Yeah. And you can't no. even see their faces. And it's cool because it is in that theater. It is in this is where Elvis Presley that's, played. Yep. This is where Barbara Streisand played. And that's what they said when yeah. they were standing there. They you know the talent that was on stood, that stage. Who has stood here prior to us? Yeah. So it takes you back. You yeah, know, which you is so back. cool. You know, I mean, there's not much left of the original international slash Hilton yeah. other than the, you know, the sparkly ceiling. But but, but that theater plays such an homage to yep. Vegas so greatness. People. Yeah. And you have these two people that you just, you know, I mean, you that, could go back and see them again and again. It's just, yeah. You know. yeah, it was great. Great, great. Can't say enough. Yes, so. Soundtracks, your songs, our stories, the show at the Westgate. Of course, we have tickets. And all of that good information is at thevegastourist.com. Go see it. Go see it, baby. Uh, we're going to kind of wrap this one up because it's it's uh, uh, going over here. Uh, but, yes, we do have the Canal Balloon Festival we need to uh, talk about. We, um, uh, uh, we did um, Zion which was really fun. Oh, that was part of the same trip. Yep. Zion, Zion, Kanab, Kanab. 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 Zion, the sand dunes, um, uh, the animal oh, Yes, oh yes, oh yes, the sand Don't dunes. Don't forget the sand dunes. God, I forgot the sand dunes. The, the sand the, dunes uh, was fun. Take, let's take some kids that have never been out in nature to the sand dunes and let them play. Not just the sand, the pink coral sand dunes, with, with snow. With snow on it. They've with never snow been on in it. snow. Never. Never been in snow before. They thought that was like an alien creature getting what them. What is that white stuff? Yes. That is snow. <laughs> yes. They had never seen snow before. Yes. You forget, they, we didn't take them with us when we took the other kids up to um, Mount Charleston to the no. snow. They weren't with us. Nope. That was their first experience in snow. We have spring break coming up. We've got, uh, uh, God, uh, Vegas, they... They've changed a lot of the events around, and so it's really it's throwing your schedule. Yeah, off. it is. It is. So, you know, um, uh, of course, you know, can always go out and do a. We have to do a Death Valley update. There's a lot of new stuff. That, well, not a whole lot of new stuff, but there's stuff. Yeah, they've got some construction getting finished out. Yeah. There so, yeah. As usual, website updates. Uh, if you're looking for Vegas deals, go to tvtdeals.com. Uh, those those specials change every week. Uh, what else, babe? We got a lot of other stuff. That's just we'll have a new yard by the end of the week. Yep. Um, we're also going to uh, on our YouTube channel. There's going to be more stuff up on uh, YouTube. I've got a whole freaking drive full of stuff that I have been meaning to hey, post. You have been cleaning house lately. Yeah. Um, the 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 thing that I really want to do is I want to go over our honey or our um, anniversary trip last year oh to DC? washington dc oh dc that's that's a whole i think yeah by yep, yeah well actually that's several so so that's going to be up on uh youtube here we're going to start to break that out because really there's a oh, lot that's there take me a whole week to go through photos to yeah 
Um, uh, you know, so, yeah, there's... What, eight days of photos to go through? Yep. Oh, gosh. So, as always, you can like this, 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 this YouTube, this podcast, which will also be... <laughs> you a, could like uh, this couple if you want. Yes. Because we kind of yes. like ourselves. Subscribe to it. And leave us your comments and your questions. And, of course, you can always find more, more information at where? TheVegasTourist.com. That's it, baby. Woo. Woo. All right. Any last words there? Um, no. I'm, I'm worded out. It's... For some reason, I just had a, had a thing with, in my mind, go through, you know, the whole good night, Gracie thing. Good night, Gracie. Yeah. Good night, Gracie. Yeah. In Montana. Good night, Gracie. Yes. Alex and Gracie, good luck with your new life. In Montana. In Montana. Yeah. With the snow. <laughs> I, I, I had an educator on who... who. Well, keep in mind, she's 21 years old. Yeah. So we had to educate a 21-year-old on who Gracie Allen was. Yeah, so she could be proud of that name. Yes, because we kept telling her good night, Gracie, and she had no idea yeah, what we so, meant. All right. As always... Catch us next time, all right? Yep, we'll be here shortly. The Vegas Tourist Podcast. Have a good week. Good night. Good night. Bye. Skin dark.